Hi guys, welcome to my channel. Sorry that I haven't put anything up for the last week. I finally completed my two end of year essays. Yes! I still have a couple of essays to do because I had to bonus on them because earlier in the year I was unwell and I couldn't do them. So I still have some of those to do, but I'm almost in the clear and then I've got to do my dissertation. I was going to do a review today. I've mainly just been doing reviews and a couple of other things, but I wanted to do something that was more personal. And the internet, everyone loves a list. So these are the 10 books that made me. And by that, I mean, these are books that have really struck me with an idea. They've really made me think about the world in a different way. They've really informed who I am as a person. So the first one was the Harry Potter series. This was the first series that I'd read other series before. I read Chronicles of Narnia, some of them. I didn't read all of them and obviously I'd read other things and my mum bought me the first three and I just fell into the world and loved it. I wrote a end of year essay last year on the theology within Harry Potter. I just love, I love Harry Potter. It's the one, the one series that I read and every, every single time I just wish I could be in that world. I think J.K. Rowling does an amazing job of keeping the world so similar to ours that you really you really believe that it, you could just turn a corner and get into Diagon Alley. I went to the Warner Brothers studio tour, the making of Harry Potter, and that was, oh my god, that was amazing. That's where I got my Bellatrix poster. And it's also a series that has really inspired me to write myself. The second book that made me was Lord of the Flies by William Golding. This was a book that I read in year 10, I believe, of high school, so when I was about 15. We studied it in our English Lit class and it was the first book that opened my eyes to metaphor, to allegory and I remember reading this story and really liking the story. It's about a group of boys who get stranded on a desert island and try to survive and they sort of descend into anarchy. And when my teacher started talking about the fact that it was making a political statement about the about the Second World War and political fascism, it just blew my mind and ever since I've absolutely loved it. The third book is a book that I studied at A-level. I actually had to do my first year of A-levels twice because at the beginning of my second year of A-level the first time I felt really really ill and I was out of education for about two years so I had to read it again and the first time I read this book I didn't like it that much I thought it had really problematic things but then the second time I came to it I was a bit older, a bit wiser, I thought I knew everything at the age of 17 as a lot of people do and I came back to it and I was like oh my god this is amazing how could I not have loved this and that book is Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte it's just got so many things in it a lot of people get put off by it's quite a big book and obviously it's not written in modern English. It was written in the 1800s, but it's got proto-feminism in it. It's got this amazing trajectory of a woman who wants to be independent and to be intellectual and to be free and to find love and do it on her own terms. And it's just amazing. You can argue that there are issues with it in terms of modern feminism, but I don't think you can look at it through those lenses. I don't really like classical books that much. I do read them on occasion, but they don't really interest me. But this I loved. So the fourth book was a bit of a toss up for me between this and 1984 by George Orwell, which I also loved. But I went for this one because I think I came to it first and I just find the world more interesting. Uh, 1984 is very bleak. It's still really, really good and I loved it and I loved seeing the play. But the fourth one that I chose is Brave New World by Aldous Huxley and it is amazing. It's a really, it's quite an old sci-fi novel. It's set in a dystopian future where no one actually has children anymore. Everyone is genetic engineered and they're genetically engineered to work within their social class. So it's about class structure and someone goes out and finds a boy who is not from society and sort of a uh, primitive society and introduces them to the world of this, this society and it's amazing, I haven't read it in years actually, but it was the first book that introduced me to dystopian fiction and futuristic sci-fi and I absolutely loved it. So the fifth one is a book that I read when I was younger but I also had it read to me and it is To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee 
And the reason I love this book so much is, aside from the imagery and the environment of the Deep South and the status of black people before the civil rights movement and of the rural poor and so on and so forth, as well as all of that, it was read to me when I was 18 by my mum. I was in hospital, I was incredibly ill, I had endocarditis which is an infection of the heart muscle and I had severe septicemia. I'd had two rounds of open heart surgery within a couple of weeks and I got to the point where I had multiple organ failure, I was on intensive care and I could barely even move my neck and it was horrendous and she read a load of books for me but this one I particularly loved. I remember just her reading it and just listening to the sound of her voice and the horrific pain I was in and the suffering I was in just mellowed hearing her and I can never thank her enough for what she did for me and I did recover, thank god. So To Kill a Mockingbird, it just resonated with me at that point in my life. So the sixth one is, I'm going to say it's slightly more cheerful, it's not really cheerful but it's more, it hasn't got such a horrible sob story attached to it and that is Bloody Chamber by Angela Carter. So it is a short story in itself, The Bloody Chamber, but it's part of a, a collection of short stories and they are feminist retellings of a number of fairy tales and they are just amazing and The Bloody Chamber itself is a retelling of Bluebeard. All the short stories within it are amazing feminist retellings and the it deals with the issue that a lot of fairy tales are about controlling women and they're about saying look this is how we do things in society and it's not only to control women for the sake of men i do want to point this out a lot of fairy tales and i still think a lot of stories that women in particular tell their daughters are about keeping them safe from rape and men and it's not about saying necessarily a oh, rape is your fault it's about saying don't go into the woods at night because there are monsters and the monsters we're going to tell you about are horrible fantastical beasts to keep you away real monsters who are men who will rape you and will murder you and will butcher you in the woods so it's really interesting looking at that and it's just an amazing set of short stories. If you're into any sort of fairy tale reimaginings, you should read it. They don't take very long to read and they are absolutely excellent. The seventh book is the second book I read by Terry Pratchett. The first one I read was Monstrous Regiment, which is also amazing in terms of feminism. Go Terry Pratchett, I love Terry Pratchett. But this is Reaper Man, and it's the second, I believe, in his death series. And it's just about um, the Grim Reaper going about his business, sort of dealing with death. And I think a complication arises, I can't remember exactly what, I haven't read it in a while. But there's a beautiful quote in it. It's to the effect that our lives are like ripples in a pond when someone drops a stone in. As long as the ripples from your life are still being felt by those who knew and loved you, then you never truly die. And that was particularly important for me because several years ago, I believe I was 19, my father died very suddenly. He had the same heart condition I did and he had a heart transplant and the transplant heart turned out to be not as good as we thought it was and he died very suddenly. And I gave a eulogy at his funeral and I quoted that. The eighth book is a type of post-apocalyptic fiction which is a genre that I absolutely love and this was one of the first books I read in this genre and I just loved it so much. It is called The Death of Grass by John Christopher which is the pen name of Samuel Ude. It's also known as No Blade of Grass, I believe, in America. I believe it's written in 1956, and it deals with the event of all the grass in the world dying. Basically, all of the food supply goes because not only are we reliant on um, grass and plants for our food, but the animals, if we eat animals, are reliant on that too. So there's mass food shortages, and there's one man whose brother owns a farm I believe somewhere, I think it's somewhere in the north. They did a movie and it was in Scotland, but I don't know exactly where it is. And he lives in London and he manages to get a few people out and they go on this journey to this farm. And as they do, they sort of have this dilemma of losing their morals along the way. I would definitely recommend it if you're into the post-apocalyptic genre. 
and you've never read anything that's sort of older within it, so I would definitely recommend it. The ninth book is another feminist story, it is The Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood. I read this and I absolutely loved it. It's the story of a dystopian future where a theocracy is in place. So a theocracy is a religious mode of governing. If you think of the Taliban when they held Afghanistan or certain parts of the Middle East under ISIS, then it's a similar thing. It's using religious ideals and forcing them on people. So it's a Christian society and women are demonised and there's been some sort of event where the majority of sort of higher up women are infertile so they need to use these women called, called handmaids to have their husband's babies and it's about slavery and a woman trying to escape and get to the underground sort of railroad to get out of the society and it's sort of based on her diaries and it's you don't really know how it ends but it's it's really good it's terrifying but it's amazing and i think everyone everyone should have to read it because it presents the very real fears of women the final one is the one that i've read most recently i read it last year in the summer and it is the establishment by owen jones it's the only one that isn't a fiction book it's about how the establishment, particularly in Great Britain, but also elements of um, America and elsewhere, are controlling society, and about how neoliberalism is wrecking the economy for all but the very, very few wealthy elite. And it's fascinating, and it made me really upset, and it made me really angry, and it really confirmed my belief that I am left-wing and that I am socialist, I don't really want to talk too much about my political views, but I am really quite left, I've always been left, and this and this book sort of confirmed it for me. So that was my list of the 10 books that made me, and I hope that this has given you a better insight as to who I am as a person. What books made you the person you are today, and how you choose which books made you, because it was really difficult. So if you like this video, please like, and if you'd like to see more, hit subscribe. I will be reviewing Ready Player One soon, because I read it, and oh my god, oh my god, I loved it so much, so I have to talk about it. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.